The Sandman has arrived on Netflix and we here at Key Issues are here to guide you through the dreaming. The Sandman is an incredibly influential story but can feel extremely overwhelming and often dense. So we're going to be bringing you a ton of smaller scale videos over the next few days designed to help you navigate the world of The Sandman. Whether you've read the series multiple times, you're just now getting into it, or you've never heard of The Sandman in your life, we hope that these videos will be helpful and informative. Morpheus, otherwise known as Dream, is a member of the Endless. As the literal personification of dreams and stories, he is one of the most powerful beings within both the waking world and his own plane of existence, the dreaming. But, as the series has shown you, the Sandman needs his vestments to show his true power. Dream has three symbols of power that all contain a portion of this nearly endless, well, power. And after being summoned accidentally by Roderick Burgess, who was trying to summon and imprison his sister Death, he lost these symbols of power. While Dream was in a weakened state, he was robbed of his vestments or his tools, and with these tools he controls the dreaming and the waking world, and without his tools he's much, much weaker. I have to have my tools! Dream is also recognized by these items. His helm is referred to as his crown, and his ruby is his literal symbol of power. Without these two alongside his sands, other godlike beings look down upon him, and lesser beings stand up to him when they otherwise wouldn't. So let's take a closer look at these tools and why they mean so much to Morpheus. To begin with, we have a simple leather pouch that contains the sands of sleep. The sands contained within the pouch are, in actuality, extremely small pieces of the dreaming, the plane of existence that dream controls and where his powers are nearly endless. While the pouch itself seems small with a very limited supply of the sands of dreaming, it's actually a bottomless bag with an infinite supply of the resource dream uses most. The sands themselves have two primary uses. First and foremost, the sands can bring both dreams and nightmares into the waking world. There are countless examples of this throughout the show, as well as the comics. Nearly everything within the dreaming is composed of the sands of sleep. Subsequently, Dream can use these sands within the waking world to fashion nearly anything he needs. From clothes, to food, to a copy of Spider-Man 3 featuring Thomas Hayden Church as the Sandman. The second use the Sands of Sleep has is that they can pretty much force any being across all of existence to just fall asleep, which allows Dream full access to his powers as he would be able to enter that being's dreams, transporting them to the dreaming. Keep in mind I say beings because Dream, as an aspect of reality, doesn't simply exist on Earth, but he operates everywhere throughout reality. You know, he interacts with other species other than human beings. We even see him at one point interacting with aliens like Martian Manhunter. The Sands themselves were once in the possession of John Constantine. Yes, it is pronounced that way according to both Neil Gaiman and Constantine's creator, Alan Moore. John's girlfriend at the time lifted the pouch from him and used the Sands over an undisclosed period of time to get high. Morpheus eventually tracked her down and retrieved the pouch, but she died from abusing the Sands of Sleep. Morpheus helped her die painlessly within a good dream as repayment to Constantine for helping him find his first symbol of power. The second is the Helm of the Dreaming, which is one fashion accessory that you just cannot go without this fall. Trust me, every goth in your high school, college, your job, or even at your local Comic-Con will be doing their very best to make one of these in their basement while listening to 30 Seconds to Mars and searching for long black peacoats on Amazon Fashion, you know, assuming they don't already have several. The Helm of the Dreaming was made by Dream as a piece of armor. It was fashioned from the bones of an undisclosed dead god and made into this helmet. It serves primarily as protection for Dream while he is in the waking world, as within the Dreaming, he would not need protection from anything. The helm was, like the sands, stolen and ended up in the possession of a demon in Hell. Dream then travels to Hell and competes in a battle of wits against this demon named Koranzon. 
I like to think of it as an ancient rap battle. Here we go. Dream was able to easily outwit him and regain his helm. However, in the process of regaining his helm, he angers Lucifer Morningstar, leading to some pretty crazy things that happen, which we will cover in another video later down the line. And finally, we have the Ruby Dreamstone. The last symbol of power and the most powerful is the Ruby Dreamstone. It's a bit more complicated to explain and has more of a history within the comics than the other items, but fortunately, as a comic book YouTuber, I specialize in being long-winded and, you know, explaining stuff. The Ruby Dreamstone, or as it's otherwise known, the Mater Opticon, was a gem that Dream created and placed within it a portion of his power. It has the power to turn dreams into reality. Remember the film Wonder Woman 1984? Of course you don't. No one does. It was awful. But in that universe, there's a different but very similar item called the Dreamstone, which we do have a video on. The Dreamstone made its first debut in Justice League of America 19 and was used by a minor league villain named Dr. Destiny, whose real name is John D. John shows up again in Neil Gaiman's Sandman, being housed in Arkham. Dream travels to the home of Martian Manhunter, who recognizes Dream in his Martian appearance. Dream's appearance changes to suit whomever he is speaking with, so when talking to Manhunter, he appears as Martians would expect him to. Manhunter is humbled to meet him and is happy to tell him that the ruby is stored in a Justice League warehouse. Dream attempts to retrieve it, but finds it has been altered so he can no longer use it. D was able to retrieve the stone and use it to cause a number of people to kill themselves before Dream arrived to stop him. Dream tricked D into entering the Dreaming, and D ended up destroying the gem, thinking it would kill Morpheus. Instead, the shattering of the Dreamstone restored the last of Dream's missing power, and he regained true Goth God status. Rather than killing D, Dream returned him to Arkham, believing that the stone had caused him enough harm. There are other Dream Stones created by Dream that contained elements of this power within the comics, but none of them has been shown within the show yet, and we don't want to confuse you by elaborating on them any further, especially because they might not even be relevant to the show at all. And considering that the Ruby Gemstone was by far the most powerful and the one featured within the Netflix series. There is a bit more history on the Mater Opticon, but not super important for people who simply want to know more about his symbols of power and what they afford to their master dream. So I think that's going to be it for Dream's vestments or his symbols of power. I hope you learned a lot about what they are, what they do, and why Dream needed to get them back. A few things about them aren't super clear, but frankly, not everything in the comics needs to be explained. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It does really, really help us out. And also remember the motto, it's the symbols of power over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.